Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells. I'm a senior artist. In this quick tips and tricks tutorial, we'll take a look at some essential shortcuts in Photoshop. As you can see, this is the Photoshop interface. Uh, you have your tools on this side, you have your layers on this side, and this is the main viewport area. Uh, this is a very old, uh, quick cartoon I had done for a uh, pitch we were going to do for a fun cartoony monster game. Uh, it's quite a number of years old, but it was a fun little thing, and I figured I'd have that at least you, you, so you guys could see something on screen. All right, some very quick things right off the bat. Control-I inverts. It inverts the color. Okay, Control-I puts it right back, keeps it simple. F goes full screen goes to a black screen and it goes back to the original screen okay that was just F I used the F key and clicked it several times let's assume for a second let's go ahead and get a uh, couple different colors in here let's assume we've got two different colors and we need to quickly go back to our black and white all we have to do is hit D as you can see it went back to black and white by the way also to easy just switch out these two different colors Let's go ahead and add a quick new layer. Let's assume I was going to paint, you know, do something like this. I can now just hit X, and that's white. And I've, I've just switched out the colors. I'll do a quick delete. Let's go ahead and just change a couple colors. And I'm going to show you a shortcut for that in a second anyway. Let's go ahead and do blue. I'll do it up here. So here we go. There's blue, X, red. Okay. Very quick, very easy. To hide the selection, as you can see, the, the, this is the little ants that run around the screen. lets you know that it's active. You can hit Control H. doesn't mean that they're gone. It just means they're there. It's hidden. Uh, I can go ahead and I just hit Delete. So anything I put on this, at any point, I can just hit Delete as I'm working on it. Delete, Delete. Okay, You can actually leave that going if you want. It's really up to you. You don't have to. But I like to. I like to be able to. Okay, uh, you can zoom in a couple different ways. You can use your Control Plus, and I can zoom all the way in, or Control Minus, and that zooms out. If we zoom it in a little bit, and let's say we get it off screen, you can hold your space bar, and when I hold the space bar, you see I get the, the hand. That allows me to now pan this around. Now the nice thing is with this is, let's go ahead and do a Control Minus, and then we'll go back to pan. I'm holding the space bar. You can actually space bar right off, almost completely off the, the edge. So it really comes in handy. It allows you to move it where you need to. I'm just left clicking and holding this. Okay, it's very simple, very easy. It comes in handy. Um, in fact, I use this quite a lot when I'm, I, I'll, I'll zoom in, you know, control plus, I'll zoom in on that. And then, you know, maybe I'll sample. By the way, sampling a color is just hold down your alt key. See the little uh, eyedrop picker? So you can actually sample colors. I can sample the gray color. But I'll use the space bar to pan, and I can then you know move to a certain area. I can use the alt, and once again, you can see how it updates. I can go ahead and you know pick a different color. I can hit X, and I can pick a gray color and do gradients thereof. All right, so it comes in handy, uh, especially when you're when you're uh, painting, I'm on the paintbrush tool right now. Let's say we've got some gray in here. Okay, and right now we're, the flow in opacity is 100%. If we change the flow down to say 50 and we hit X, the black doesn't come in at 100%. You'll see that. I actually have to really work that in there to do it. And of course, as I press harder and harder, it goes blacker and blacker. But again, the nice thing is, is I can sample any mixture of that as I'm working it, any blurring on that, and get different colors right there on the fly. Comes in very handy and it's one of those things that, that I like to use quite a lot actually. And obviously if you want to save this, the easiest shortcut is Control S, which is save. And you'll get a dialog box, you know, what do you want to call this? You know, it'll go to where you want to navigate it to, things like that. So you can obviously save it that way. If you're saving artwork or saving a JPEG for the web, of course, a Control-Alt-Shift, uh, hold on, 
Shift S. I'm sorry. Yep. There we go. You have to hit all four of them at the same time. It's Control Alt Shift S. And this is where you can turn around and drop the byte size. As you can see right here on this dialog box right now, the document is 933K. If I save it for the web as it is, I can knock it down to 71K. So that's quite a savings. Okay, so again, that's Control Alt Shift S. Okay, that brings it up for saving for the web and for devices of that nature, okay? Just so you've got that. Now, there are some times when you're working, especially with layers, when you might want to duplicate the layer and move it around or just duplicate it to, to change how uh, the opacity on this if you want. Control J does that. Let's see. Oops. Control J. There we go. So I have to make sure, I, have, I actually have to stretch my fingers a little bit with my particular keyboard. But as you can see, it just made a copy of that layer. As you can see, it's layer one copy. You know, not sure that we necessarily need something like that. And just, you, by the way, to just, you can uh, delete by just clicking on the delete key. I'm going to do Control Z to undo that. Or you can just click, left click, hold, and drag and drop to your trash can. So either way, it works really easily for deleting layers. There'll be other times when you're working in layers when you want to just fill the entire layer with a quick color. I did a quick uh, new layer here, and that's Shift Backspace. You'll get a uh, little dialog box. It'll say, okay, do you want to fill it with the foreground color? You want to fill it with the background color? You can click a color picker and you can then select you know whatever color you want here for instance you can have different modes for the different layers you can do normal dissolves i'll show you real quick let's go ahead and do a, a green one we'll do color we'll do it for green and let's go ahead and set this to multiply and then hit okay i actually didn't do a whole lot on that but to change the the variation on what the, the layer is, you can always just click this button. Once it's highlighted, it says normal. Once it's highlighted, you can use your arrow keys and just arrow through some of the different things. Like for instance, this is a dissolve. There's the multiply. Color burn, linear burn. You can see the different effects you can get. Darker color, a lighten, sort of kind of does an inverse and makes all the black be the actual color. Screen actually really starts to stress it out a little bit more. Color dodge really pixelates it. But again, this the sometimes these are effects that, that work uh, for what you need. Linear dodge, of course, uh, changes the contrast a little bit harder. Lighter color, overlay. Overlays are good sometimes. Soft light, hard light. Vivid, linear light, pin light, a hard mix. And the difference, it basically is inverting the green color. Exclusion, subtraction, it's inverted the color completely. This is the actual opposite of, of green. And then divide, kind of just splits it. The hue gives it a nice, like a, it's almost a grayscale, it almost looks like. And saturation, it's where it really takes the, that, that black and white drawing isn't technically a black and white, it's an RGB drawing just with black and white. And the saturation has really oomphed it up to the nth degree. This is sort of some of the color you can actually get out of it. Okay, so there you go. You can just change things on the fly with your arrow key as long as you've got that. Again, with this particular layer, we can just hit delete. If we want to just delete it, or we can hit the delete layer too. Okay, very easy, very simple. Also, now some people uh, I know uh, when I'm working on things, you know, you have the the circle. Um, you know, but some people kind of don't like the circle. They they look like the crosshairs more when they're working on such. Uh, it's really one of those where that it's kind of six of one half dozen of another. But in order to be able to get this, all you have to do is use your cap locks. That allows you to change when you do the cap locks when they're on. You have a crosshair. When it's off, you have the regular circle. And there you have it for just some quick, simple um, shortcuts, but essential ones in Photoshop, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of uh, uh, painting and such in Photoshop. Those are some really good ones to have, and they're ones I use a lot of, so I hope you guys will too. 
Anyway, my name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3DMoto.com, and thanks for watching.